Glance is the OpenStack image service where you upload and store images that you're going to boot instances from. While at the recent project teams gathering in Dublin, I spoke with three members of the project community, including the former project technical lead, Brian Rosmaita, the new project technical lead, Erno Kovaya, and one of the other project members, Abhichek Kakani. They spoke with me about what's new in the Queen's release and what we can expect to see six months from now in the Rocky release. Okay, I'm uh, Brian Rosmeta. I'm the uh, I was the PTL of Lance for the Queen cycle, so the delivery we're just about to release. And I work for Verizon Wireless. I've been working on Lance uh, for quite a while. I'm uh, Erno Kubaya. I'm uh, starting as a Glance PTL for the Rocky cycle, and uh, I'm working for uh, Red Hat. Yeah, hi, I'm Abhishek, and I'm working for Red Hat, and I'm doing the core duties for Lance for the last couple of releases. So how did the, the PTL transition go? Is that, is that working out all right? Uh, it's pretty smooth. Yeah, yeah I think uh, <laughs> we've been working together for a while, so it's... Uh, I think it's, I've done it three times in a row, which is enough. I think we need to try something else. So my intent is to continue to work on Glance and continue to contribute. Um, let Erno do the heavy lifting kind of organizational stuff. We'll see, see how that goes. But he's been uh, in training <laughs> <laughs> for a while. I think he's ready. I think he's ready. So it's been, it's been smooth. We're, uh, well, so far, at least, uh, well, it's the co first couple of days. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. We haven't, we haven't actually out. done anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we start the, the planning sessions are uh, starting tomorrow, actually. So for the next three days, we'll be discussing what we're going to do with Rocky. So right. I'm going to step back and let her know and all that stuff. Yeah. But right now, I want to talk about Queens. Yeah, let's talk time. about so, Queens. Uh, tell, us, tell us what you accomplished and uh, how much of what you told us last time actually happened. So we actually, um, I guess last time we were at the point where we introduced an experimental API to do image import. So that's been completed as a, uh, so we released the uh, 2.6 image API as uh, the current API for Glance um, and for OpenStack. Um, well, so it'll be released tomorrow. That's right, it's not there yet. It's, been, <laughs> it's soon to be available, yeah, right? That's yeah. right, tomorrow's the official release date. Yeah. So tomorrow, the uh, official API will be version 2.6. The other ones will be supported. Key key things that it has is the interoperable image import. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing we were waiting for was a very requested feature was the ability to uh, for an end user to specify a URL and for Glance to download the image for them and store it locally so that then you get fast boots when you wanted to boot a VM. The, there have been problems. That functionality had been available in our version 1 API but it's kind of insecure uh, if you just allow people to just grab uh, anything from an arbitrary web address. So the new, the new version where you use it through the interoperable image import workflow does have the ability for operators to whitelist or blacklist depending on you know, their use case and what they're doing at several different levels to screen out the, URI, the URIs that are actually available for people to download images from. So I think that gives us a safe way to do the, uh, the web download. So that's um, that's the, the main thing we delivered. Additionally, there's um, the idea of the interoperable image import is that it's a, from the point of view of the user, it's the same thing across all clouds, but from the point of view of the operator, you have the ability to customize what happens to the data your user gives you in case you want to screen or in case you want to screen the image itself or in case you want to put special metadata on it, you have that ability. So we do have a plugin structure now for people to introduce plugins that are part of the chain of the import process. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people from NTT put in a, uh, added a plugin that allows you to inject metadata into the image record. Um, so the use case is that you may have, uh, for user images, you might want them to boot in certain places or you might want to give certain hints to the Nova scheduler about where to boot these things. And so that's possible to do an import. And the other thing it gives us is now there's a, uh, a fully working plugin in the, in the uh, source code tree. So if people want to do their own plugins, they can. So there's the ability to do third party plugins, there's the ability to do your own local one for yourself. And of course, there's also the ability for you to contribute, you know, do a full plugin that's part of Glance and contribute it to the community. And the advantage to doing that is in the, 
you know, we always require unit tests as part of code contributions. Um, unit tests kind of protect your code because if you're doing a local patch, um, things may change at a glance, or we may change some implementation of something that's not user facing. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have unit tests, nobody knows that we're going to break you. So in addition to being a nice thing to do to contribute to the community, it's actually long term in your own interest because it protects your, your yeah. plugin. And on the, on the same time, the whole whole plugin framework uh, was designed in a way that you don't need to to have that really deep understanding of how how glance works. You don't need to go deep into the code base. It's it's very contained, and the changes that are needed to to introduce your own plugin, uh, we we minimize the touch points where you need to go and and hit the code. So it should be fairly fairly easy to get into them and understand how they work. And, and looking at the examples we have there, uh, go and create your own and see how they work and kind of uh, easy easy way to get get into it and uh, it should be should be something what uh, what all those DevOps nowadays can can fairly easily go and do themselves if they need some specific features on on that import uh, phase itself. Can you give an example of what somebody might want to use the, the plugins for? So. That's actually a yeah. good question. We we have a, we have a plan for for next uh, for the rocky cycle to actually introduce a plugin that does automatic image conversion. So, for example, we have a majority of of OpenStack deployments utilizes Ceph as a storage backend, and uh, Ceph works really well with images only when the image is in in raw format. It needs to be expanded. It needs to be Pure bitstream, so that Ceph can can apply its own magic and and make it really efficient. But our users have images in various versions of, of different packaging and container containers. What they what they provide those images like QCOs and ISOs and all that. So so one one plugin we are we are going to introduce is a plugin to to convert that image. The user doesn't need to know about it. So, so one thing about these plugins is that they do not need any uh, special input from the end user who is making the creation call. And at this point, the user can go and upload QCOW image into the cloud, but because the cloud deployment benefits that image being a raw, that image gets converted on the import phase and uh, everyone will be happy. The user gets better user experience for faster boots, the image working there, and the cloud provider gets gets the benefit of the infrastructure what they have there. With the, um, the web download, that's part of the uh, import process now was called copy from in the version one API. And as I said earlier, it was kind of unsafe, but that's a, was a very highly requested feature. Um, so I just want to remind people we've deprecated the version one API several cycles ago, mm -hmm. and at this point we feel that V two's got everything people need and have requested. So. We are going to actually remove the V1 API. Um, We're going to remove it in Rocky. So we okay. yeah. Ho hopefully, hopefully, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so it was scheduled to be removed already in Queens. We wanted to push it down until we get this web download yeah. merged, and and that happened so late on a cycle because removing a whole API with all of its testing and all those inter ties around, you don't want to it's, do it's, it. it's not an easy process. You don't want to do it on the last minute. So we had to postpone the remove, actual removal of the V1 API until, until next cycle, but it's definitely going to go. So that's, that's one of those things that we are not going to support anymore. Longer. Probably most end users aren't going to notice because I guess the default has been to use V2 or I don't know, past three cycles, three cycles. Yeah. So it's maybe. Uh, so it's it's really more aimed at my comments aimed at operators. Probably yeah. operators who are working in older, older systems. I guess on that note, we're also uh, going to remove the finance registry in the S cycle. So actually what we did in this cycle in Queens is we officially deprecated it. So the glance registry is a service that end users would not even see, but it was um, it was introduced as a uh, intermediary between the glance database and API nodes. But um, as the API developed, we gradually learned that we really didn't need that service. So it'll simplify things for deployers. And this is another one where probably if you're using from Okada on, you're probably deploying plans without using the registry. 
Yeah, yeah. It, it well, as long yeah. as you don't have V1.1. Oh, right. Because it was a hard requirement for V1, and one of the reasons why we still have it around, we could have done it earlier, but we still had to keep it around because V1 yeah. was around. Yeah. And as a part of uh, deprecating van the Lance registry, we have also refactored Scrubber. Yeah. Yeah. So earlier uh, Scrubber was using Lance Scrubber was using registry, but now we have removed that part so that it is safe to uh, remove uh, deprecate the registry and remove it at all. Yeah. That's another. It's an operator thing, so end yeah. users won't even. No, 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 no about the operators. operators yeah. Yeah. It's 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 the tool that, that that takes care of scrubbing the data of delayed deleted images. So, so we simplified it. It should behave better. Yeah, and it's, it'd be nice. And then, I guess maybe you want to say something about what's coming at Rocky. Give yeah. Some hints with the, uh, so uh, before conversion. that means oh. uh, yeah. in Queens, uh, uh, I'm really proud like how oh. Lance team has worked. Uh, because uh, lately we have really shortage of the people and we have managed to pull out the things. Yeah, yeah. And that's and that's, and that's something. That's, yeah, uh, truly, that's truly right. being proud of this uh, yeah. this release. We got a lot in. Yeah. We got lots uh, lots of work finalized mm -hmm. with very skeleton crew, and big kudos to Abhishek here. Actually, yeah. the the image import uh, would not be on the state where it is without right. him writing all the testing for it, finding tons of bugs and fixing them so that we actually have stable API to release. So that is definitely a big, big thing. What, yeah. what we are here as a team representing, we, we can be proud of this release that is coming out tomorrow. So Rocky, you know, we're still, you still haven't had your meeting yet, but what, what do you know will be in Rocky already? So with, with Rocky, we we need to focus uh, quite a bit on on stuff that happens under the hood so we have some refactoring for example or uh, one of the queen's uh, cycle community goals was to move the policies into the code and uh, basically how how the policy work is done in glance we really didn't have possibility to do that and uh, and we didn't have really the cycle and the manpower to tackle that because uh, we need to do quite significant refactoring how our policies are applied. Because uh, lots of OpenStack uh, projects, the policies apply to the API calls themselves. And in Glance, the policies are actually way deeper in the code. They are way much closer to the database. So that's, that's something we are trying to work on to get the policies more aligned with the API calls. And um, and have that clarified a little bit, which is, it should not affect end users, it should not affect really operators, it just work that we need to do, technical debt we need to clear, and um, that's, a, that's a big big part of work what we, we are gonna do, and we have few of those, uh, those items there, so you, you shouldn't be expecting a, a huge API changes, huge new features, in a rocky, we we need to focus our time uh, more on the on the stuff what happens under the hood and and stabilize the code base, which is is really really super important part of, for us. And yeah, so it's important for the operators as well. Yeah, yeah. even if they don't specifically notice. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's that's the thing. Like, um, the less people talk about guns, the better work we are doing because that means that we are not on the escalations of, of every support call. <laughs> and, and that's kind of the goal where we are, we are aiming and the, the part we are working hard to maintain. But on, on the same time, we, we worked hard a couple of cycles to bring out a, a big feature into the glance. And uh, that has caused that we have, uh, we have left uh, some of that, uh, that refactoring and that technical debt lingering there. So if I think one of the big things is if people are expecting to see something, something that is important to them uh, coming into glance, this cycle is the time to step in and, and tell that they are willing to help us. Because uh, we, we have few things lined out, like the image conversion plugin. Uh, we, we are talking about uh, some level of lifecycle management so, so one of the things what Glance is lacking is ability to 
basically hide all the images so that they are still available for Nova. And let's say when you need to do uh, migrations or you need to you need to apply uh, a snapshot, you need that base image in there. But if that base image had a security issue, you as a operator don't want your your users to go and boot a new VM out of that image. So so that's something we are trying to figure out how to do it right so that you can basically hide the old, world, old images popping up on your image list and you can have your, your latest version of that image kind of showing up, but, but still for those who absolutely need it, it's still available there so you don't need to actually delete the data and, and possibly break the instances that are already running based on that image. It seems like a real simple problem, except <laughs> everybody has a different view. Oh, all, yeah. all deployments have yeah. different practices for how they update images yeah. and how they maintain them. And so we, we've got to come, our, our interest is in coming up with something that's useful for everybody, but um, that's always a problem. <laughs> but I think it, we, it, we, it may ca cause the situation that some people just effectively need to change their practices, but at least we are trying to provide the tools to do it on a similar way everywhere. In a way that makes sense. Yeah. So, so I think those those are the kind of uh, kind of the highlights we are we are looking forward for for Rocky, the, the V1 removal, the image conversion plugin for the import and and the uh, uh, hi, hiding hiding the inactive or old images there. But that's that's probably all what is gonna be Kind of visible changes for for mass audience, on, unless we we get a a good pool of, of uh, new contributors with fresh ideas who are willing to work with us and and make those those features happening what they think they need. So you, you mentioned that uh, you're looking for new contributors. Uh, tell us where we go for for people that are interested in, in coming to play. Probably the best best place is um, to pop up on uh, Freenode IRC. So our uh, IRC channel uh, hashtag uh, OpenStack dash plans. Uh, we have pretty good coverage on on the time uh, time zones. Uh, Abhishek being being in uh, Indian time zone, Indian. myself in in Europe, and Brian in in US. So we have quite good coverage throughout the day someone being there to help those new people getting in. Obviously, our, our weekly meeting that can be found from the OpenStack.org uh, meetings page is a good place to pop in. We always try to make sure that we have at the end of the meeting time for open discussions. That's a good place to, to jump in and, uh, and see if your ideas are, are uh, something that, uh, that we would be taking on. Obviously, the mailing list we monitor that. So, so just tagging the subject with uh, with glance and and bringing bringing ideas, questions. If if that's some something you would rather do, is is fine. We try to monitor all of those. We are we are a small community, but and and in that sense, we have all been working quite a while with each other. So, on a certain sense, we are fairly tightly knit together. But that doesn't mean that we wouldn't be welcoming new contributors. So we, we are definitely there to help you out. Contribution in reviews is also welcome. And there are lots of, lots of different ways to contribute in terms of uh, whether it's a new feature, fixing bugs. Fixing or bugs on one thing that's really good is to help with documentation. Yeah. Um, even, I mean, pointing out problems in the documentation is helpful, but fixing them is even better. So yeah. it's, it's a, a slight ramp up because. Uh, the way you contribute to documentation is the same way you contribute to code. It goes through the process and everything. But you know we're there to help in the IRC channel. And once once you've done it once or twice, it's easy. Yeah. But that's a way for people to contribute. And you're a full fledged OpenStack contributor because our documentation is kept in the same repository as the code base. So yeah. as far as we're concerned, that's a it's a it's a it contribution a as contribution. as any. Yeah. And and obviously, we are present in PTGs. Um, at, at least in the short term, I know that at least I will be in Vancouver. So anyone watching watching this after the PTG and who will be Vancouver, who wants to join, 
come and talk to me. I will be there. I will be available. And I'm more than happy to help face-to-face -face getting people started as well. That's no problem. So in, in Denver, I spoke with uh, Petr Kovar about, about the documentation and how that had moved from a main documentation right. project down to the individual projects. How is that working out for you all? It's a problem. Um, it's definitely it's, is. <laughs> it's, we, we try to keep it updated, so that's good. And we have some automation to help. You can, you can put a tag in a code change that's going to impact documentation, so we're at least, and it'll generate a bug, so at least we can sort of be aware that something needs to change. But, you know, keeping things up to date is a problem. But also the organization, um, the, when the, the uh, docs were moved over, they were, store, what, they were moved over um, with the expectation that they would be reorganized. And the reorganization is happening slowly because we've had other stuff to do. So I think from a standpoint of, um, I mean, I have ideas of how it would be great to reorganize the documentation. It would be great if somebody wanted to step in and do that. Because it's, I think right now, our documentation is okay. It could always be better uh, with everything. Um, but it's, I think it's more of an organization because we have the, uh, we have several kinds of documents we, we maintain now. So we have some documents that explain how to use the APIs for end users. We have documents that explain um, the architecture of Glance for contributors. And then we have documents for uh, operators. And we also have documents for administrators who are sort of in between operators yeah, and end right. users. Yeah. Um, and so those are all in our code repository. And they're not as clearly delineated as, uh, I'd like, I guess. So, so one one problem we have, so, uh, really, which is so related to the documentation, is that actually none of us are technical writers, and and we don't have any of those in in our community either, which yeah. which means that all the documentation changes what we are making are a bunch of nerds writing tech, <laughs> and and the problem is that what might make totally sense for us and and look clear for us might not be something that is clear and understandable for a person who is freshly jumping into uh, Glance, trying, trying to learn it as a, as a total, uh, total newbie and, and don't have the vast knowledge of the, of the uh, service as we do. And that's, that's kind of the perspective we are definitely lacking at the moment uh, to, to make those documentation changes. Yeah, it's got some pluses because it's, um, it's more likely the documents will be updated when code changes have happened because they're all in the same place. But on the other hand, as, as Erno's pointing out, we're not technical writers, so we do our best. But you know, yeah. anyway, patches are welcome. Yeah, <laughs> <It's exciting. laughs> there's room for so anyone who does information architecture, it'd be great to take a look at our documentation and sort of propose how to um, you know how we can present it to make it easier to find things. I think that that's the main thing is yeah. uh, since it's kind of mixed, it's since we have so many different audiences and there's one landing place, that, that's kind of a problem we need to, it would be nice to, if we had time to sort of figure that out a bit. And I'll see you all in Vancouver then. See yeah, you in Vancouver. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>